from today onwards, uh, passengers that are vaccinated with an uh, with a WHO certified vaccines can enter Singapore freely uh, without uh, quarantine measures or post arrival uh, uh, COVID test. Uh, prior to this, there is a series of uh, different differentiated mechanisms towards travelers from different countries, uh, inclu including air travel pass, which intends to zero COVID countries, vaccinated travel lanes in intended for a couple of countries with uh, rather high vaccination rates, and the general travel lane, which will subject passengers to quarantines of at least seven days. So currently, what requirements are still in place for incoming passengers? Uh, so incoming passengers should be vaccinated with one of the recognized vaccines that is certified by the WHO. Uh, and uh, with that, they just have to take a test two days pr prior to their departure. Uh, it can be a rapid antigen test or a PCR, uh, but as long as it's within two days. And after that, uh, there's no restrictions at all. The lifting of border restrictions is really significant uh, given Singapore is such a hub for travel in the region, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Singapore is a transit hub in the region. Uh, and previously during the pandemic, Singapore closed the uh, transit function of the airport. Uh, that certainly caused some disruption to the region's connectivity. Uh, this surely bodes well for the aviation industry, uh, as well as so many tourism related uh, businesses. There's been a lot of excitement around the land border opening with Malaysia. Why is this important? Um, so there are a lot of uh, Malaysian workers that used to commute daily between Johor Bahru, which is uh, the Malaysian city that is north of Singapore and Singapore. Uh, so uh, that daily commuting can now continue uh, with the full reopening of land border. They can, uh, they can use whatever transportation means that they used to use, public buses or motorcycles or cars. Uh, so this will certainly alleviate uh, labor shortage in uh, a couple of sectors in Singapore, most importantly, the contact intensive ones, F&B uh, and health saloons, among others. Uh, and... Um, for a Malaysian, of course, uh, this will mean that uh, they will have better source of income uh, in Singapore uh, by commuting daily and they can earn a higher wage. And Nu Ching, do you expect travel activity into and out of Singapore to bounce back pretty quickly or will it take quite some time to return to pre-pandemic levels? Um, actually, the travel uh, activity will surely bounce back uh, pretty quickly, but to the pre-pandemic level, uh, that will take time. Uh, the reason behind is that, of course, with the restrictions being lifted and as well as uh, across the region, uh, restrictions are being lifted. Singapore's uh, function as a transit hub can be fully utilized. And also uh, those who want to visit uh, can, can enter without so many hassles before. Um, so uh, surely there will be a fast recovery in terms of uh, visiting. Uh, but before before recovering to pre-pandemic level, a, a critical factor will be uh, the return of Chinese tourists. Pre-pandemic, Chinese tourists takes about 19% of total tourism inflow and is like the, the biggest source of tourist tourism uh, for Singapore. Uh, and if returnees uh, to China are still subjected to very stringent quarantine, they are not coming back anytime soon. Um, so without that uh, part, uh, let's say, of tourism revenue, Singapore's tourism is not going to fully return to pre-pandemic level until mm. China drops restrictions. How badly has Singapore's tourism industry and economy been hit since the pandemic began? Uh, tourism industry suffered quite significantly because there's no uh, returnees. Uh, so basically they are on life support by the government uh, via the job support scheme, among others that co-found a proportion of uh, wages of Singaporean employees. Um, contacting sensitive service as well, uh, food and beverages, among others, are subjected to social restrictions uh, so, that they are not, uh, so that their recovery is also quite slow. Uh, but in general, Singapore's economy is not heavily, heavily focused on uh, tourism. Tourism is only about 5 to 6% of the economy as a whole. 
but on the other hand, the the contact intensive industry employ a disproportion, uh, disproportionately high amount of workers. Uh, many are Singaporeans, so that certainly has affected a lot of Singaporeans' usual livelihood. And Singapore is still seeing 5,000 new COVID cases a day roundabout, but restrictions such as masks outdoors are still being lifted. How much of a return to normalcy is there in Singapore? Uh, so I would say different people construe uh, and receive, embrace such measures uh, quite differently. So on the street, you can see many people happily taking off their mask uh, and uh, enjoy the returning to normal kind of life. Uh, there are also more gathering uh, with a bigger size uh, within the restaurants, particularly well received by the Chinese restaurant because they are designed for sharing. Uh, but also you can still see many people uh, choose to be more cautious uh, in terms of protecting themselves, uh, probably because of the a strong narrative that the government has set up uh, during the onset of the pandemic that COVID is a very dangerous disease. What else has the government said? Because surely there are expectations that case numbers will rise significantly with the reopening of the borders? Um, actually, uh, the expectation has been set in, the case, in, in that uh, reopening of the border will merely make Singapore's uh, COVID situation, let's say, in line with international level, uh, which currently is actually, we are around there. Uh, so most of the cases are already domestically transmitted. Uh, so the expectation is more on, on the end of like social restrictions loosening in terms of larger gathering size, more returning to the office. Uh, but 5,000 cases per day is already, let's say lower than uh, the peak at around 20,000 per day uh, during January, February. Uh, and uh, I even if in that scenario, Singapore does not see a super, let's say, the, the, the healthcare uh, infrastructure are under pressure, but not necessarily overwhelmed. So uh, it seems that people are generally confident that uh, the government can, uh, the healthcare system can ride through the new wave.